Hello and welcome to ExcelMasterSeries.com. Today we're going to take a look at the four main parts of the output of an Excel regression that will allow you to fully understand that regression in just a few seconds with just a glance. You don't need to know every part of the output, just the four main parts and you'll have a good idea of what's going on. So let's take a look at a regression. Right here we have the tech index that is determined by the outputs of the two stocks. The tech index is the dependent variable, the y variable of the regression equation, and the two independent variables are the Google and the Microsoft stock returns on those various dates. That would be the x variable of the regression equation. But let's go ahead and regress those variables. And we can see in Excel 2003, here's how we do it. We go up to the drop down menu tools. And we select the data analysis tool. And then select regression of those choices. Hit OK. And that brings up the regression dialog box. The first thing we're going to do is check the residuals checkbox down at the bottom there. We want to look at the residuals. And then we're going to look at the input Y range. That would be the dependent variable. And we're going to select the tech index. Select all of the data along with the label, the tech index label. That's the dependent variable, the Y variable. Now we're putting in the X variable range. That would be the Google and the Microsoft stocks along with the labels. And since we have the labels, we're going to check that box, and we're going to leave the 95% confidence interval box checked. That's standard. And the output range, we're going to select the cell that will be the upper left-hand corner of the output of this regression. That will be cell 813. Hit OK and run the regression. We see that regression output starts in cell 813. And now, here's the output. And the first thing we're going to look at is the overall regression accuracy. And that can be determined by R square and adjusted R square. Now, R square represents the percent of variance of the output variable, the tech index, that's explained by the variance of the input variables, the Microsoft and Google returns. And we see in this case, the R square is, is 0.907. That means 90% of the variance of the output variable is explained by the variance of the input variable. Adjusted R squared is typically quoted more than R squared because it's usually more conservative. And whenever you add a new input variable, adjusted R squared only increases if that new input variable increases the predictive power of the regression equation. R squared will always increase when you add a new variable. And the second thing that we're going to look at is the probability that the regression output the output of the regression is not by chance. And that would be shown by the significance of F of the regression. The smaller the significance of F, the greater the probability that the regression output is not by chance. In this case, significance of F for the regression is 0.028. That means there's only about a 2.8% chance that our output was obtained merely by random chance. And the third part of this regression output that we're going to take a look at is the reliability of the regression lines coefficients and the y-intercept. That would be determined by the p-values of each. And we can see at the bottom of the chart the p-values are in purple and the intercept and the coefficients of the two variables are in yellow. And the smaller the p-values, the greater the probability that those outputs were not obtained by chance. For example, the p-value of Google is only 0.018. That means that there's only a 1.8% chance that that coefficient is obtained by chance. And we can take those, the intercept and the coefficients, and create the regression equation right there as we've done. Now we're going to take a look at the residuals. The residuals are the difference between the actual tech index, the actual value of the dependent variable and the predicted value of the dependent variable. That would be the residuals. And we're going to graph those on a scatter plot chart. And to do that in Excel 2003, go up and hit Insert, Chart, and then select Scatter. And we're just merely going to plant that scatter chart right there and take a look at it. And what we want to see is that there is no pattern in the residuals. They're centered around zero and they're somewhat normally distributed. We see that. So our regression appears to be okay. No problem with the residuals, as we can see here. 
And the four most important, most important parts of the output of a regression done in Excel are, number one, the overall regression accuracy that would be determined by R-square and adjusted R-square. Number two, the probability that the regression output is not random. You could look at the significance of F of the regression. And number three, the reliability of the regression's y-intercept and coefficients. That can be shown by the p-values of each and by the residuals showing no patterns. So if you'd like to be a, an Excel statistical master, take a look at the Excel master series. It's a four manual series. You can pick it up at uh, www.excelmasterseries.com. There it is. It's only $19.95 for all four books. Thank you very much and goodbye.